Hello and welcome to part 2 of the tutorial. Here we are going to uh, demonstrate the clock cycle thing. We said the last time that uh, the instruction, the cycle pair instruction for all instruction isn't the same. So, uh, for, in, for, for, for demonstration, the clock cycle would be uh, the summation of CPI for this instruction times the instruction count for this instruction from 1 to n where n is the number of instructions so if we have uh, add uh, with cpi 2 and instruction count of 5 multiply with cpi 9 and instruction count of 7 we can calculate uh, the clock cycles with 2 times uh, 5 plus 9 times 7 where n here is equal to 2 just for simplicity, we take the weighted average CPI and we name it the global CPI. So, the CPI would be equal to the total clock cycles over the instruction count. So, this can be demonstrated as the summation of I equal 1 to N for the number of instructions of CPI of I times instruction count of I, where again I is this this certain instruction over the instruction count so it's as simple as the CPI for this instruction times the relative frequency of instruction I which is uh, or for instance if it appeared two times and then there are 10 instructions so it's 2 over 10 so uh, getting to example 1.6 in your textbook so we have two different implementations of the instruction set architecture Instructions can be divided into four classes according to their CPI, class A, B, C, and D. Uh, the CPIs for class A, B, C, and D are 1, 2, 3, and 3 respectively. The clock rate is 2.5. Uh, P2 with a clock rate of 3 GHz and other CPIs. Given a program with dynamic instruction count of uh, 10 to the power of 6 instructions divided into classes as follows, 10% the relative uh, frequency of class A, 20% class B, 50% class C, and 20% class D. Which implementation is uh, faster? So, uh, we need to calculate the instruction count for each class at the beginning. So, class A... is 10 to the power of 6 so it can be 0.2 or 20 over 100 times the result in uh, I'm sorry uh, so that would uh, result uh, in 10. class B has a frequency of 20% 2 times 10 to the power of 5 and uh, class C all of that we're talking about processor 1 P1 class C would have uh, 5 times uh, 10 to the power of 5 D would have uh, 2 times 10 to the power of 5. So calculating the total time we need uh, uh, the, the equation would be equal to time equals number of instructions times CPI over the clock rate. So we have different number of instructions and different CPIs. So that would be equal to the first one, 10 to the power of 5 times 1 plus 2 times 10 to the power of 5, the instruction count, times the CPI of 2, plus uh, 5 
times 10 to the power of 5 with a CPI of 3 plus 2 times 10 to the power of 5 in instruction count with a CPI of uh, 3 as well. So that all is divided by the clock rate which would be 2.5 gigahertz. That would result in 10.4 times 10 to the power negative 4 seconds. Okay, if we calculated uh, P2 with the same uh, formula, that would be equal to 6.66 times 10 to the power negative 4 seconds. So the total time. Uh, Processor 1 takes is 10.4 times 10 to the power of negative 4 seconds. Total time P2 is 6.66 times 10 to the power of negative 4 seconds. So P2 is faster. And that's the first part of the question. Getting to number A. Number A, what does he uh, need? He needs what is the global CPI for each each implementation. How could we find the global CPI? CPI is equal to clock cycles over instruction count. So CPI for processor one would equal uh, to 10.4 times 10 to the power negative 4 uh, which is the total time for uh, proce for uh, processor 1 let's say yeah, that's the time yes over uh, uh, 10 to the power of 6 which is the instruction count what's missing here okay what's missing here is the clock rate which is 2.5 times 10 to the power of 6 so uh, that's the uh, Equation revisited. It's yes, the CPI times instruction count over clock rate equals CPU time. But that's for calculating the uh, CPI. CPI of P1 is equal to the global CPI is equal to 2.6. Okay. What does he need for question B? He needs to find the clock cycles in both cases. So, how can we get the clock cycles? Okay. Clock cycles of processor one would be equal to instruction count of plus a times the CPI plus instruction count of class B uh, sorry times the CPI of class B plus the same for class C plus the same for class D that would result in 26 times 10 to the power of 5 so what we did here is multiplying the 
instruction count times the CPI but we applied the sigma function from i equals 1 to n for different class of instructions please try the same for processor b for processor 2 in the same question 1.6 in the textbook in order to practice the topic thank you